In this video, we're going to talk about something called pneumothorax. Um, what is pneumothorax? Well, it's two words. And the first part is really referring to air, and the second part is referring to the chest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, a CT here. Well, not exactly a CT, but uh, sort of like a CT, like a cross section um, where that's the vertebrae, you know, that's the posterior part to kind of illustrate what exactly pneumothorax is I'm going to draw here a lung uh, this is this is one lung and this is the other one and basically I'm going to draw another layer out here and this will be able to uh, provide you with sort of a understanding of what's ap actually happening um, this part right here the that's the lung right there and there's that lining that's actually covering the lung that is given a special name it's called the visceral pleura now if you notice out here you have another uh, lining and that's actually attached uh, to the chest wall see that this is all the chest wall this this area in here that's like the ribs and you know the muscle and and all that and this uh, lining that's attached to the chest wall is called the parietal pleura parietal pleura and what we're really looking at is the space in between here see this space right here and that space is given a special name that space is called the pleural cavity and pneumothorax basically is air inside the pleural cavity now that's essentially the definition of pneumothorax and when you have uh, this air inside the pleural cavity what it does is um, I'll just er erase a little bit of the lung here. When you get a lot of air inside, it, it causes the lung to sort of collapse. And uh, if we have, I guess the red color represents air, not exactly the best color to use, but uh, if it represents air, that's essentially what's happening is that the air will start to make the lung um, collapse basically. And, um, and I'll show you a chest x-ray later on, but I wanted to show you a cross-section first to kind of illustrate uh, what's happening where this is the lung, you know, these are the lungs. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about the definition of pneumothorax first. Uh, there's actually five different types. Uh, well, there's probably more than five, but let's just stick to the first five. The first one is called a primary. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax. Now, uh, pneumothorax. I probably figure. Uh, let's just um, uh, abbreviate pneumothorax. You know, I don't know. Okay. Well, what's going on here? Well, uh, the primary part, uh, type of pneumothorax involves um, no lung disease. This is typically something that can occur in tall uh, young men, um, and and they're usually in their twenties and it can it can happen from smoking it can also happen from diving diving uh, and also from high altitude flying as well so th that's the the first type the primary uh, spontaneous pneumothorax the second type is secondary the secondary spontaneous pneumothorax now what's going on here well this is with uh, lung disease this is somebody who has some underlying pulmonary uh, uh, disease and uh, some of the causes well what are some of the lung diseases well you have asthma you have COPD you have cystic fibrosis that's a really good one that'll that'll be on your exams uh, you can also have HIV uh, related uh, pneumocystis you might remember that uh, tuberculosis and another really good one for the licensing exams is Marfan syndrome Marfan syndrome. So these are the, the, the these are the causes of secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. The third type is traumatic traumatic pneumothorax. Some sort of trauma has occurred. Well, what type of trauma? Well, injuries. You know, chest injuries that have some sort of you know, something that has entered into the chest and created some sort of uh, entry point for lung to come in into that pleural cavity that we talked about earlier. The other type is called iatrogenic. Iatrogenic just means doctor caused. 
doctor caused the doctor caused this well you know medical interventions that went wrong like for example uh, mechanical ventilation or some sort of procedure you know like um, um, you did a thoracentesis and you punctured you know space you weren't supposed to puncture uh, mechanical ventilation uh, maybe you placed a catheter or something like that you know something that the doctor did that accidentally caused the pneumothorax and the final type that I wanted to discuss is something called tension pneumothorax now tension pneumothorax is something that essentially is the same thing there's really no difference but the problem with tension pneumothorax is that the the air that's come into this plural space the air in plural space cannot exit at, at all cannot exit and this is pr probably the most serious type uh, because what's happening here is that the person is going to go into some severe respiratory distress um, to the point where he, the patient can die and um, I wanted to touch base a little bit about this one uh, probably more than others because it's a bit different and the reason it's a little different is just because of this significant emergency involved when you have tension pneumothorax you really don't have any time uh, to do chest x-rays which is the way you diagnose all the other types this one is sort of a it, it is a medical emergency because you'll have falling oxygen oxygen saturation uh, you'll have a low blood pressure uh, when the patient comes into the ER uh, you'll probably visibly just be able to see you don't even have to do the chest x-ray just be able to see on physical exam the tracheal deviation and this is all a, a, a medical emergency so this should be diagnosed clinically and um, the treatment should be done immediately uh, otherwise the person can go into respiratory and cardiac arrest and, and die so now let's talk a little bit about the symptoms we touched a base on a little bit about the symptoms uh, but let's talk a little bit more the symptoms of pneumothorax well, somebody has pneumothorax what are they going to have in terms of symptoms well as you can Im imagine difficulty breathing you know dyspnea another thing is pleuritic chest pain pleuritic chest pain pleuritic just means when a person breathes and they're going to have pain well there's many other types of pleuritic chest pain but pneumothorax is one of them another thing is uh, when you listen to them when you listen to their lungs there's going to be decreased decreased breath sounds uh, on the affected side um, that's kind of you know pretty obvious and, and you know those of you who percuss um, you know a patient's uh, uh, lungs you'll see that on percussion there will be a hyper resonance so those are some of the symptoms of pneumothorax but as you can see they're pretty vague so really the diagnostic um, uh, uh, mechanism is is really what you need to do now notice this is you do this with all the types of pneumothorax except the tension pneumo because remember the tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency you have to pretty much treat it immediately because the chest x-ray might take some time and by that point the patient might die so you do this and uh, there's some pretty characteristic findings and I'm going to show you a chest x-ray in a bit but I would like to list the findings first um, there's quite a few um, there's uh, quite a few findings on a chest x-ray one of them is called absent uh, um, vascular markings um, what that just means is that the normal vasculature that you can see on a chest x-ray you probably won't be able to see if the person has pneumothorax all right, what else do we have? Uh, well, one thing you'll see is you'll be able to see all the uh, all the air. You know, you'll be able to see all the air uh, on the chest X-ray. Now, you might also be able to see the the fact that the lobe and the lung is actually shrunken. Um, the other thing that you might see is a um, uh, diaphragm that is hyperexpanded hyper expanded uh, another thing you'll see is the tracheal devi deviation I talked about a little earlier deviation and then another thing called a mediastinal shift and, I, and I'll, I'll show you a chest x-ray in about a few seconds alright so here we go just when you thought I'd never show you a chest x-ray here's one 
All right, so this is your chest X-ray of a pneumothorax. And let's see if we can sort of pinpoint most of the stuff. Well, this part right here, this whole thing, that's basically all your air. And this is a pretty pretty obvious chest X-ray. Uh, there's so much air in here that you can't even actually see the lung. If there was a lung that was, uh, let's say, partially collapsed, it would probably look like that. But in this chest X-ray, you can't even see it. Uh, what else is uh, what? What else can you see on this chest X-ray that's diagnostic of uh, pneumothorax? Well, take a look at that right there. That's the trachea right there. Do you see how it's how it's curved? It's not supposed to be curved, right? And that's what you call the tracheal deviation. Tracheal deviation. Now, what else? What else can we see? Well, look at this heart. Look at this whole section here. Is the heart really supposed to be that far out? No, and did you notice what's happening there? There's there's basically a shift, and that's what you call the mediastinal shift. Because of that air, everything's being pushed to to this side, you know. And like I said, there's many other things that you can probably see or not see uh, on a chest X-ray with uh, um, with a patient uh, with pneumothorax. So finally, we get to the treatment. How do you how do you treat this? How would you uh, treat a, a patient with uh, this? Well, like I said, in the tension pneumothorax, you have to immediately go to the treatment. But in the other types, you can uh, do a chest X-ray first. But regardless. The treatment is the same. It involves needle decompression. What that means in layman's terms is you, you stick in a needle and you uh, allow the air to exit. And what's important really for exam purposes is where do you stick the needle. So if this is the front of a patient and these are the ribs, you know, this is your first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib, one, two, I'm just labeling the ribs. And then this is the person's clavicle, right? Clavicle. There's a, there's a, there's a space that you're supposed to put it. It's called um, the second intercostal space in at the mid clavicular line. So what does that mean? Well, the second intercostal space is this space right here. That's the second intercostal space. And the midclavicular line just means in the middle of the clavicle. So this would be the midclavicular line. So where would you put the needle? You put the needle right here. And you'd, you'd hear a gush of high pressure air escaping and that would confirm the diagnosis. And then later, the uh, second part of the treatment involves uh, placing a chest tube. And the chest tube will help allow the uh, lung to uh, expand back to its uh, normal uh, uh, size. So that's a quick presentation about uh, pneumothorax.